Hi, Enzo. How are you? Hello, Isabella. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm really good. Thank you. I'm really excited to have this conversation with you today. I feel like every time we talk, I always say how much I admire you and the cast for, you know, putting so much emphasis and bringing authenticity into the work. And we've never actually discussed it. So I'm just really excited to have this talk with you. Me too. Yeah, this is great. So before we get started, can you give us a little bit of a short intro on you, on your role in the play, um, everything about that? Yeah, totally. So a little bit about me. I, um, I'm a second year MFA director at Boston University. Um, I've been working in the theater for a good, you know, 15 years now um, as an actor, uh, director, producer, stuff like that. Um, worked in New York for a little while. Um, you know, mostly drawn to in, in, independence, you know, um, small scale, bare bones stuff. That's always been my passion. Um, but figured I'd go to BU and get my master's degree and see, you know, what, what more I could learn. Um, and yeah, and then about the play, um, it's a beautiful play called um, El Nogalar uh, by Tania Saracho. Um, and Tania was actually a BU alum uh, from the undergrad program there and worked in Chicago at Teatro Luna for a really long time, put up about 20 plays um, in her time in Chicago and in other environments. And her plays have just kind of caught like wildfire. Um, and there's been some great productions of El Nogalar, but it had been a little while. And it was definitely something we were interested to revisit because um, the story still continues to be so impactful and important, yeah. uh, both from the perspective of, you know, um, Mexico and as well as just like the perspective of you know family what does it mean to come home and how do we hold on to the past or do we need to let go um, big questions like that that's really interesting and so you know for people that have never heard of El Noalar what is the play about I know you mentioned it was about family and like family ties um, but if you could give us like a little bit more of a description yeah it's absolutely so um, the play is about uh, the Galvan family, <laughs> and the Galvans have lived on an estate called Los Nogales um, for many generations. Um, the estate has actually passed down through a line of um, women matriarchs, um, so it's a little bit different in that uh, respect, um, but it's a, it's a pecan orchard, Nogalar being the word, the Spanish word for pecan orchard. Um, and yeah, so it's the story of them coming home to Mexico, to um, the matriarch coming home from the US and, you know, kind of having to adjust to the new way of life in Mexico. Um, but it's like, you know, things are very different. Um, this is at the time of the uh, drug cartel takeover in, in Northern Mexico. So this is when things, you know, intensified between the governments and the cartels. Um, so everything's very precarious and, um, you know, the question is, you know, will Maite find a way to um, save her, her house um, as well as, you know, save it for her two daughters, Anita and Valeria. Um, and then the two other characters that are central to the play are uh, Memo Lopez and uh, Dunya. And they've both uh, worked at the estate for a long time, um, you know, Lopez grew up running around in the pecan orchard with, you know, baskets full of pecans, um, you know, basically um, kind of the the working class. And so this is kind of the story of their um, coming into new wealth um, through, through the events of the play. So, yeah. I love that. And I can't I can't wait to watch it. I I remember when I first got the email from Michael to work with you guys. And I looked up the play and I started doing my research on it. And I found out what the play was about. And I just have so much emotional connection to this play. And it's crazy how the universe works in those type of ways. Um, Because I grew up in Monterrey. I grew up in the north of Mexico during the time of the cartel takeover. And so I know, like I was there. I know how much suffering there was and how much loss and I didn't know that there was a play about it. And so there being a play representing such an important part of, you know, my life and so many people's lives, it's really touching. And then yeah. the play being called El Nogalar is so special because every, like that tree has so much impact, like in the North of Mexico. Like I grew up 
running around, you know, the, like my grandma's backyard and she had like several, like no, like no other trees. And I would just be like picking up the nueces, you know, and just eating them. Like, you know, while I was playing with my cousin, she would have the big basket of all the nueces. And it was just amazing. And the, there being a play called El Nogalar is so special. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I resonate with that. Uh, not to that extent. That it, it is amazing. Like, that we, especially that we ended up getting connected because, you know, I just, as far as my like search for, um, you know, uh, dialects coaches, I was just like somebody who is native to Mexico or, you know, like knows the tongue very well. Or I did not in my in my wildest dreams imagine we were going to find you from Nuevo Leon. That's like so cool. Um, yeah. but I also, I grew up in West Texas. And so we are like, it's kind of a geographically similar, um, environments. Um, and we also have the countries down there. Um, so when I first read the play a couple of years ago, that was like an instant connection for me. I was like, this is, it has that feeling of home, you know, just, just from that. Um, yeah, but that's, that's so cool. <laughs> it is really cool. It was definitely meant to be. And that yes. was actually my next question. How did the play come to be? Yeah. Did you start the project? Were you called in to, you know, direct yeah. the play? So how this all started was back um, during the pandemic, I was, you know, obviously we were all kind of cooped up and I was a little bit bored. And this is around when I started looking at grad schools. And um, I asked my um my former professor of directing, you know, just for play recommendations. And he sent me like a dozen or so plays and El Nogalap was one of them. Um, and I just, I read the play and I really liked it. And then it was kind of in the back burner for a little while until we were working on scenes in class. Um, and so I worked on a scene from it and I was like, you know, I think I really want to work on this play. Um, and it just happened that we were doing, um, the next season was going to be focusing on Chekhov and Chekhov adaptations. And so a little bit more about uh, the play, um, for those who are familiar with uh, Anton Chekhov's The Cherry Orchard, this is a reworking of that story. Um, because Tanya said that, you know, when she she was actually a BU student, which I didn't know when I first read the play. Um, but see, she said that when she first went to BU, um, you know, she didn't encounter, they didn't teach Latin playwrights. And she said that the most Latin A playwright that she encountered was actually Chekhov. And, um, you know, somebody kind of like dared her to write a play that was, you know, basically a Latin A Chekhov play. Um, and so that's how that play came about. Um, and then I just, you know, I pitched it for the season and, um, you know, uh, Susan Mickey and Wendy Goldberg were both on board. Wendy's actually pretty close friends with Tanya. And so it just all felt like a perfect fit um, so that students can now, you know, study uh, Latin A playwrights. It's really cool that there's kind of been that changing of, um, of the climate there. Um, so it's meant a lot to the to the students um who've gotten to work on it um so yeah definitely meant to be definitely that's so refreshing to hear I was having a conversation um with Annika about you know her like you know emotional connection to the play and she was telling me how her family mm -hmm. speaks Spanish but because she's the youngest child she didn't get as much of that and how yeah. important it is to her that she shows her family, you know, that she can speak Spanish, that she can bring authenticity into the work. And that was so special to me, you know, when I heard that. Um, and that was one of my next questions. Why was it important for you to, you know, bring authenticity and respect into the play? Yeah, I mean, I've, you know, always wanted to prioritize, um, I, it, you know, whatever play I was I might be working on, you know, from whatever culture around the world or from American, I, I want to be as truthful um, as we can be. You know, I think, unfortunately, the word authentic and authenticity kind of gets thrown around a lot. And especially with Mexican culture, it usually has to do with food. <laughs> um, so it can, it can tend to be a buzzword. But for me, the, you know, the heart of, you know, really plays by Chekhov and, and plays by Tanya is being truthful. Um, and so for for me to like you know yeah. put up this play and just take a kind of a our best guess um at especially the accents you know for me I'm like very sonically inclined <laughs> so I hear things very detailed and um and so like I you know I just knew it was gonna really grind my gears <laughs> if we weren't doing justice to the accent 
um, and to the language itself, because there is also a lot of Spanish actually in the play. Um, so I think just that sense of like, of wanting to really understand the work that we're doing and understand the people and the culture and the environment so that we tell a truthful story. Cause I don't, I just don't want to, you know, contribute more to misunderstandings um, that I think is so rampant with, especially with the U S Mexico relationship, because we're so close. We kind of think that we understand each other very well when that's not <laughs> entirely true. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, I know I've said this a thousand times, but I just really admire that work, like that commitment that you, that you, you and the cast have, because it's just so important and it's so often overlooked and it perpetuates these like, you know, stereotypes or, you know, even the thinking that everyone has the same Mexican accent when no, you know, like it depends on your background. It depends on, you know, how, like, how many years you've lived in the U.S.? How, what have you been doing in like in your time in the U.S.? That's all going to affect your accent um, when you're speaking English coming from Mexico. And I just feel really, really grateful that, you know, I was given the chance to work with you guys and to, you know, with a play that like means so much to me, it means so much to you, it means so much to the cast and that we can really, you know, make it something special because it definitely is something special. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that that's for me, <clears throat> you know, as a director, I, I want to reflect the work that the playwright has put into something. And I know that, you know, for Tanya, yeah, this play was so special and so like from the heart, you know, because in a lot of ways she's writing about her experiences and her family and her disconnects of being a Mexican American and going home to Mexico. Um, and so, you know, knowing that there's so much um, nuance and layers to the text, you know, I want to make sure that we're, um, like bringing all of that to to life as well you know we did a pretty extensive amount of dramaturgy with everybody coming in over the first week and a half of rehearsal just like you know every day we would have like 30 minutes of just a, a session of you know uh learning about culture learning about gender and and learning about you know just different different aspects of um uh, mexican history um co colonial history um you know just really wanting to excavate the play as fully as we can as we could now that's not to say that we nailed everything because you know ultimately we, we unfortunately we don't have a team that's like all mexican-american or even all latin a you know we had a team that was uh, a diverse range of people um so we had to rely on research and 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 digging in that way but i think that people are going to see and i'm interested to see i actually met somebody who's from mexico yesterday and then of course you're going to come see the play as well and so i'm interested to see what we got right and what we could improve on next time <laughs> i mean the effort is what matters the most you know and like you guys really put in the effort and i'm sure it's going to be amazing because it already is like from what i've seen i'm already so proud of you know having been a part of it and so proud of you guys and so proud of the actors that have put so much work they really have so much commitment. Um, it's just amazing to see. Seriously. Yeah, that's been a huge gift as a director is not feeling like I kind of have to, because there's always, there's usually there's productions where, you know, at least a few of the actors are kind of dragging their feet. <laughs> uh, but that has just not been the case here. Everybody's been so passionate about it and that really shows up on stage. Yeah. So, very lucky. What was the casting process like? Because I know, yeah. you know, it's a play with, all, all the characters either speak Spanish or they are from Latin descent. And yes. you were amazing at really, you know, having a, a cast of, I think all of them or almost all of them are from Latin yeah. descent. And yeah, it's hard. That's really yeah. hard. So, it's well, unfortunately I very hard at BU um to be to be completely honest. That is changing. Changes are coming, you know, but it's um it's not as diverse of a student pool as we would as we would like part of that's because also because it's like only certain years can be in casting so it's like we have more people than we get to use but that's neither here nor there but um the question of you know how did we go about casting um I've kind of wanted to I, I think that like of all the theatrical practices I feel like casting is kind of the most colonial um colonialist uh, I guess because it's just this like there's so many hoops to jump through there's so much rigor and structure and you know less just stress 
around it. And so in general, I've tried to start making my casting process more of a discussion um, of bringing everybody into the room and let's just read parts of the play together and talk about them and see who really gravitates to the work and who, you know, feels that it like you can kind of see it happening in the room when everybody's there and we're just trading off who's reading what roles like it becomes obvious who needs to play what role. Um, so that's kind of the approach we took. And we were also assisted by um, our professor, uh, Professora Melissa Pereira, um, who's actually currently understudying Jessica Chastain in a doll's house on Broadway, which is very exciting. Wow. Uh, yeah, um, she she had been very helpful throughout the casting process of making sure that we were doing it respectfully. She's uh, from of Argentinian descent and, um, you know, helped us talk about how um, a big concern for a lot of young and upcoming actors is they don't want to be pigeonholed into like, oh, I'm going to be the person in the Latin, the Latin A play, um, which is totally fair. Um, but, you know, Professora was talking to us about how it's taken so, uh, it's taken so long and so much work to where we can actually do these plays, uh, put these plays up and that then for them to get the attention that they deserve, that for, you know, younger actors to be like, well, I don't want anything to do with that is like a little bit disrespectful. Yeah. <laughs> So there was that level. And then there was also the level of like, well, if, you know, if Professora, if, uh, uh, if Professora Pereira was to wait uh, around for um, uh, Argentinian role, you know, and not be able to perform other Latin roles, she would be waiting for a very long time. Um, and these stories would be going, gone on, going untold. So we do have, you know, our cast is fully Latin A, except for uh, one of our actors, um, I don't think she'll mind me mentioning this. Um, she's her descent is from Guam, um, which was also colonized by the Spanish. And so I think it's a, kind of a similar thing there. If she's not getting it's it's she is getting to tell stories of people from Guam, but it's you know it's few and far between. Um, so I think it's kind of that stronger together thing of where if we're you know united in telling Latin A and indigenous um, and Spanish colonial heritage stories, you know, then we're you know going to be stronger for it. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And I've, I've met her. She's been on every rehearsal, even though she doesn't actually speak Spanish or have a Mexican accent in the play, but she's been there and she's been putting yeah. so much effort and work into understanding the play and the background yeah. of her character. And I just admire her so much for that, you know? Yeah, yeah same. Um, yeah, and you know, she, she came to me whenever we were um, first looking at actors for the play and we were like who do we have in this department um because we're not allowed to ask you know you're not allowed to ask people's ethnicity or their descent or their backgrounds um just really? due to, yeah due to the due to like the institutional rules around that um right. so it, it's kind of this guessing game of like so <laughs> um but she's yeah. just like i really love this play and would love to read for the character who doesn't speak spanish because she is not you know familiar with the tongue but it, yeah she's been there you know and like um, as time has gone on, she's definitely catching on, you know, with a lot of Spanish phrases and kind of slinging it around with the cast as well, which has been cool. <laughs> that is so. so cool. Yeah, I mean, and that's what I, you know, I did a play where we spoke a lot of French and I came away from that, like, having some knowledge of French. And I was like, you know, this, I think that's one of the theaters, like, really untapped potentials is uh, it expanding our linguistic knowledge um, in a very authentic way, so. Yeah. Wow. That is really amazing. And I'm so glad that even with a, like, even though I know it was difficult, you were able to find a cast that not only comes from Latina descent, but cares, you know, and, and right. is passionate about the story. I think that's really cool. Yeah. All, all, all to their credit. Yeah. All yeah. They, they definitely <laughs> that energy. So, yeah. And what is you know, your experience and their experience been with accents? Like, what has that been like in the rehearsal room, outside of the rehearsal room? You know, I know we talked a little bit about why you decided that you wanted to work with a dialect coach, but ever since we started working together, how has that changed or, you know, impacted the play? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, it's made everything feel so real in the room, you know, like, like just what, watching the scenes it's like I don't even want to like jump in to to direct because it's like everything just feels so truthful and grounded and connected 
And that really started once we started working with the accents. You know, I think it's in some ways it's similar to once you put on a costume, um, you know, that you start to transform. Yeah. And the the essence of these characters really started to emerge um, when the accent, you know, came online. Um, so I feel like, you know, it's also one of those things that it's like kind of addictive, you know, once you know the accent and can kind of access it, like it's, we just started joking around in kind of a, a bit of a Mexican accent. Again, not perfect, but you know, our, but that gives us a chance to practice it more. And, and um, it just brings a sense of community to the, to the play, you know, that we have something in common. Um, that's, that's really special. You don't get that in every, in every production. Yeah. Definitely. And the cast is all so talented. Like I was very surprised during our first session because they all, I mean, not all of them speak Spanish, but all of them either have a background, you know, when their family speaks Spanish or have just really put in the work to come prepared to every single session. And so the progress we've been making session by session is amazing. Like they really practice in between every session and they've really been able to maybe not get it a hundred percent perfect, but so close, you know? Yeah. And I'm sure that like the last time I saw them, it was already so close in this time. Cause I haven't seen them in a little bit and I'm sure they've been practicing cause I, I know them and they've probably been practicing it every day. I'm sure by now it's just amazing. Yeah. It's, it's on fire, honestly. Yeah. 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 And especially you know, one of our cast, I think this has been, you know, very much to your credit and like um, impressive uh, is, you know, one of our cast do yeah. does not speak Spanish, um, is of Sp is of Latin descent, but like has a lot of Spanish lines in the play. Um, and they like, again, there's a couple moments that feel like we need a little adjustment, but like overall, it's just like, it's dazzling to watch, you know, because it's like, I know she doesn't speak Spanish, but that's not what I'm, you know, I'm seeing it on stage that she does. Yeah. So that's. And it's all because of her commitment. Like she showed up knowing the names of the, like the, the different parts of the mouth and, you know, taking so many notes and just paying so much attention. I'm like, wow, like she's going to definitely be something big because of that commitment. You know, she's going to go far. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just to finish off this interview, what do you love about the play? What do you want people to, you know, get from watching the play? What do you love about the work you've been doing with the cast? Yeah, I think what I what I love the most about the play is that it tells a very nuanced story that's a, that's ultimately it's about a revolution. Um, and it's not, you know, I mean, Mexico is like kind of that's the central theme of Mexico is like continual revolution. And there's a there's it seems to me there's kind of a different kind of revolution happening right now where, yes. you know, um, people who have been disenfranchised for a long time, um, actually largely due to the cartels have like had a different way to access um, power and wealth and kind of the fallout of that um, and that conflict with the government with old money. You know, that's kind of what we're seeing in this play is somebody who, you know, was so in Chekhov's original, he talks he talks about um, that the peasantry had to, like, squeeze the slaves blood from their veins drop by drop, um, which is for me a very potent image and I think very applicable to a lot of indigenous and migrant workers in Mexico who like or, or just, you know, people from poorer uh, social classes who were suffered for so long and now we kind of see the the backlash against that um, and the way that plays out. So to me, that's one of the really beautiful parts of the story that I'm excited to tell. Um, and then I think, you know, the way we've been working in the room, I just, I like that we've found a, a true sense of collaboration where, you know, we're just feeding off of each other's energy and, and um, like, keeping an open mind and and being generous with each other you know I, I I I've always tried to be as um as like kind as I can in rehearsals um because I, I I just have never done well in rooms where that's not the case you know where where there's like hostility it just it just hampers real creativity I think 
Um, and so that's been really great to just have that kindness and generosity with each other and respect for each other's processes and, and, um, and creativity. And I can't, I honestly, I cannot thank you enough for, for like your contribution to this play. I, you know, I definitely like wish you were here in Boston already. So you can be feel really excited that you're going to get to come see it. Um, yeah. Very excited. I am, I'm really grateful. I'm really, really grateful and feel, you know, so lucky to have been a part of it. And I'm so excited to go watch it. I'm going to fly in on Thursday. No. Yes, I'll be there Thursday morning. So okay. I'm I'll be there Thursday morning and I'm gonna stay um throughout the weekend. And I'm just really excited to meet you in person, to meet the cast, to see the play. Uh it's gonna be so great. So tell us when, like when is the play gonna be? Where can we get tickets? Where is the play gonna be? All of that great information. So we have five performances uh next week. Um unfortunately one weekend only, but um, it'll be the 23rd um, through the 26th, and we have performances at 7.30, um, the 23rd and 24th and 26th, and then at 2 p.m. on the 25th and 26th. Um, it's going to be at Boston University uh, Studio One in 855 Commonwealth. Um, so it's kind of our main stage for the quarter. Um, so it'll be pretty easy to find if you're in the, if you're in the Boston area. <laughs> Yes. If you're in the Boston area, I cannot recommend this play enough. Like really, really take the time to go watch it. It's amazing. And the cast has done an amazing job. And Enzo has done an amazing job directing the play. So <laughs> thank you so much for having this conversation with me today. I really appreciate it. This has been great, Isabella. I'm I'm glad we got to got to chat. I'll see you soon in Boston then.